Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Just the beautiful presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you so much for tonight. Lord, I thank you for my family that's in this place tonight. Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ and those that are watching uh, on the internet tonight live. Lord, I thank you that your love and your peace and your joy that we're sensing in this building tonight, Lord, is just sensed across the airwaves. Lord, there's no time or distance in the spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that that same peace, that same presence, that same love, that same joy, hallelujah, is touching not only our lives tonight, but lives of others that watch this or that are a part of this, God. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that the oracles of God are spoken tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you have control over me tonight. I give you my life. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Lord, I thank you that our hearts are softened to receive the uncompromising word of God. Hallelujah. I thank you that the word of the Lord brings the life of God to us tonight. I thank you that you've come to give life and life abundantly. Hallelujah. That means we can have life, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. And we receive from the table of God tonight, Lord. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for knowledge in Jesus Christ tonight. I thank you that we can grow as the army of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. And I thank you that you speak to our hearts tonight. I know you have already, Lord, but I thank you that you do great, wondrous, glorious things in our midst tonight, Lord. We love you and we honor you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. Hallelujah. Amen. God's good. Amen. Good to see you guys. Amen. Brandon, I've known Brandon a long time, man. He's been a friend for a long time, and it's good to see him serving the Lord. Praise God. It's good to see people serving the Lord, period, but man, it's, it's, it's really good. Amen. Jesus does wonderful things to us and for us when we give him our hearts. Amen. You know that faith shouts before the walls come down? Yep. Faith shouts before the walls come down. <laughs> faith shouts before the walls come down. You know, God has already said in his word that, <laughs> look, <coughs> you don't wait till it happens. You rejoice before it happens. And you rejoice because you know that the word of the Lord is true and that whatever God has said, it is available for us to receive and believe in our hearts what he said. So that way when we believe and we receive what he said and we know it down the inside that it's true and we speak it, we walk it, we live it, we might not see the results of it yet come forth or manifest in our lives, whatever it is that we're believing God for. But when we begin to shout, we begin to praise, we begin to act like it's true, that's faith. That's faith. The Bible says that God has given everyone a measure of faith. People say, I need more faith. No, you already have enough faith. You think God, you think God made a mistake? Oh, I'm only going to give them a quarter of faith. But I'm going to give someone else a full bank of faith. You know what I mean? No, he doesn't do that. He says that we have been given a measure of faith. He says that faith is like a mustard seed. Those things are not big. If you've ever seen one of those, I mean, you, you, know, you know that. They're not big. But when you nurture it, when you do what you're supposed to do for it, amen, just like yourself, he's given you that faith. When you exercise that faith, when you speak those things, out that are true of what the Word of God says, the natural will have to change because the super comes on that natural. Amen. God, the Bible said, Jesus said, He told His disciples, Hey, come on, man. Quit being so faithless. Have the God kind of faith. What does that mean? What is the God kind of faith? The God kind of faith is God spoke. Amen. Let that sink in for just a second. What's the God kind of faith? I used to hear it, I used to hear that all the time. Have the God kind of faith. Okay, well, uh, God, I want your faith, you know? But I didn't fully understand that, so I started digging the word. And the God kind of faith is God speaking. When he would speak, it happened. 
This is going to sound crazy, and if I'm wrong, correct me right now, Dad. But God, had, he had to exercise his faith. Let there be light. Let there be animals, boom. Let there be creatures, boom. Let there be man, let there be woman, boom. He had to speak out in existence what he needed to be created or, 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 or what he needed done on this earth. It's the same thing with us. Have the God kind of faith. Speak the word. Listen, true faith. Now, I know that we, sometimes we get into an area in our lives where you know, we might be fighting a battle or fighting against something or whatever. We're going through some situations. But even though we're going through some situations, it does not change what God has already said about that situation you're going through, whatever it is. God's already given us the, the keys to the victory. He's already given us His Word. And when He says... Fight the good fight of faith. Exercise faith. Faith is motion activated. Brother Todd last week and taught about that. Faith, he gave that example of those, you know, those faucets you stick your hand under and then the water comes out. You've got to do something to get that result, that water. You've got to do something to get that soap to come out. Well, faith is motion activated, praise God. You act out and you do by faith what God has already said. Even if your physical body isn't manifesting the way that you want it to manifest, you will by faith and you speak it and declare it and speak it until you get the manifestation hallelujah praise God this mic's cutting out all right praise God so the God kind of faith what The God kind of faith. Hallelujah. So when you speak what the Word says, when you speak, the Bible says, I believe, therefore I've spoken. We believe, therefore we speak. We speak. Now I've been having, I just want to share an example. All summer I've been having problems with my, with my ears, with like pressure, like you feel like you're on an airplane, you have that clogging, that pressure. Haven't had any other symptoms, no sinus problems, nothing like that. But it's like I've just had that feeling. And I've been kind of dealing with that on and off all summer. And you know, sometimes you just finally get to the point where you get tired of something. You know what I mean? And, and, you, and you, uh, 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 you, you, you get to the point where you're just like, okay, that's it, I've had enough of this. I'm going to do the Word. Am I the only one that ever does that kind of stuff, I guess? I don't know if it's, maybe it's just me. But you get to a point where you're just like, you know, I'm tired of this. Well, I begin to start speaking. Okay, well, the word is true. That's all there is to it. God created me to have good sinuses. He didn't create me to have problems. He created me out of his image. So, Lord, I praise you and I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, my sinuses are whole. They're functioning normal. I begin to speak over, even though I was having the worst pain and it was hurting and it was pressure, I begin to speak the word of the Lord, just like I would speak over my blood when leukemia was in my body. Lord, I thank you that my blood's whole. I begin to speak the word. Now, I know this might be easy for some of us. I know this might be a simple teaching tonight, but, folks, we got to get back. A lot of us got to get back to the basics of faith and believing the word of the Lord. The gospel really isn't hard. It's just something we've got to believe and act on and do. Amen. And I know I'm preaching to a lot of believers tonight. I'm preaching to people that are getting with the program. I'm preaching to people tonight. I'm speaking to people and encouraging people tonight that are doing the word of the Lord and the work of the Lord. I know that. So I guess I'm here just to encourage you tonight that you keep going and do what God has called you to do. Keep speaking the word. If you don't like how things are going, check out what you've been saying. I've been doing a lot of checking on what I've been saying lately in my own personal life, praise God. And God's been doing a lot of tweaking and a lot of correcting and a lot of surgery. And he's been confronting me in areas and doing things. And it's good. I need it because I want to change. I want to get to the fullness of, of what he's called me to do. That should be a heart. Get to the fullness of what God has called us to do. Reach for what that is. And as you're on that journey, you know he's going to come and comfort. You know he's going to come and love. You know he's going to come and exhort and bless. But he's also going to come at times and confront. <laughs> and that's a good thing. 
Because, man, I don't want to be out of balance. I don't want to be in the right lane when I should be in the left lane. Does that make sense? I want to be right on target. So faith shouts before the victory. They marched around that wall, and they, 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 they marched, and they marched, and they marched, and it time came when it was time to shout. And it was time to praise, and it was time to worship. And the walls came down, hallelujah. I heard you uh, sing this song, when praise goes up, the walls come down. When praise goes up, the walls come down. See, the devil wants us to get in a tongue war and get in a fight and with our mouths and speak and, and argue and, and, and be in, 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 in a, uh, just bitterness and all this kind of stuff and, and attack the world. Listen, folks, it, we already know the, world's, the world is going to hell. The world is. People that don't follow Christ go to hell when the last day comes. Okay, we know that, and we know we need to save people, we know we need to go after people, and we do that and all that good stuff, but here's the deal. We know that's happening, but it's still our job. What's going to change that? What's going to change people's lives? Praise and worship and thanksgiving and love and kindness. That's what's going to change people's lives. Amen? And so look over here in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And, you know, these, <laughs> these folks here, you know, King Jehoshaphat, they were in a, a predicament here. There was armies, enemy armies coming against them, getting ready to slaughter them and take them out and just destroy them and destroy their lives, destroy their families, take everything they had. They were going to come in. See, that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to ambush. But listen, I'm saying this with all sincerity tonight and with all believing that when I say this, it's true. The devil can try to ambush, but God has already set up a standard. He's already uh, said to you and told you that he will pull you out of the pit. He's already said that he'll protect you and keep you because of the blood of the son of, of his son, Jesus Christ, that was shed for you. But we have got to be serious and be on the same page that the Father wants us to be on. Concerning our lives and the ministry and the things that God has called us to do, we've got to hear from the Lord daily, if possible, to know where we're at. Amen? So it says here in verse 1, chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1, it said, It happened after that that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them, besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Haz uh, Hazazon, I guess that's how you say it, Tamar. Uh, uh, and verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Now did you notice that these guys didn't go out and try to do, do it on their own and take care of business? They didn't go out and start building all these forts and, and getting all this artillery and getting all these weapons? No! They knew their only chance, their only hope was to get before God and find out what the heck is going on. Have you ever just yourself personally just, you know what, i got to get before the Lord and find out what's going on here because this doesn't make sense to me. This is weird. This is wacky. This is wild. This came out of the blue. This is a blind side, you know? And there's something about you humbling yourself and getting before him like they did and saying, okay, God, what's going on here? And let me tell you something. God is so good that he will speak and he will show us, and he'll talk to us in detail, in depth, and show us maybe where we're missing the mark, maybe where we're making the mistake, maybe where we've allowed something in, or, or maybe we're not doing something we, sh we should be doing, or something like that. He'll make sure that he gets the point across to us, his will for our life in that area. Amen? So, listen, the devil is flat ticked off, man. 
He is so frustrated. He's so gnashing at his own gums and his tongue right now. He hates what's going on. And he is so angry at us. Ha, ha, ha. Exactly. Because he knows. He knows that we understand that Jesus is coming back. That we are the victorious church. And that we have all power and all authority on this earth, Ephesians 1 and 2 says, we have all power, all authority over the kingdoms of darkness, the prince and power of the air. We've been raised up together and seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and we are the kingdom of God on this earth, walking around in two legs. We have the kingdom in us. And he is so ticked, and he's throwing every kind of curveball, every kind of fastball, every kind of filthy, dirty pitch up underneath your chin trying to knock you down and count you out and get rid of you because he knows the plan of God for your life. But he is so ignorant in trying to do that, he will not succeed. So he is so angry and so mad. And especially when he saw what was going on here this morning. Oh, the glory of the Lord was in this place. People were dancing and shouting. The victory was going on in this place. The victory is still going on in this place. We have the victory. And he can't do nothing against the victory. It's just like that baseball game, that football game, or whatever, some kind of sporting event. When the game is over and the team wins, and that's all there is to it, there is nothing nobody else can do about that victory. It's done with. They won 62 to 45 or whatever. It's over. That's the final score. They can't go back and change that score. It's over with. Same thing with the devil. We have the victory. It's over with. He loses. All he can do is go blah, 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 blah. And try to get us to believe blah, 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 blah. And try to get us to speak blah, 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 blah. That's why the Bible says, take no thought saying. When it doesn't line up with the word, don't say it. And if you do say it, repent immediately. And cover that under the blood and move on. Because I guarantee you, you're going to have to do that at some point or another. Amen? But see, they came together, and verse 5 says this, Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our Father, are you not God in heaven, and do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name's saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever's afflicting you in your life right now, get before the Lord, and you cry out to Him, and you say... <clears throat> You say how that's going to turn out. You say what the Word of God has said about your situation or your life, whatever is going on in your life right now. You say what the Word is saying. If you're going through sickness right now or some kind of disease, you say, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I have been healed. 2,000 years ago on the cross, Jesus died for my sickness and my disease. But see, a lot of people get over into this deal. Well, I've seen a lot of people die of disease, and we've prayed, and we've done this, and we've done that. That isn't none of our business. Why that happens? I don't know why that happens. I am not the Father. He knows. We're in charge of our hearts. We're in charge of what's going on in here. I'm not in charge of Bonner's heart. I'm not in charge of Ron's heart, Sabrina's heart. I'm in charge of my heart. And what's going on in there? And if there's an issue in my life, 
I know that I can talk to other people that have experience or have some wisdom or advice or, or a counsel or whatever, and that's a good thing, praise God. But when it comes down ultimately to it, there's sometimes you just can't talk to other people. You've got to talk to God. You've got to get in the Word. And you've got to tap into that thing, and you've got to find out why is this trying to hold on? What is going on here? Amen. And sometimes it's not an overnight answer. Sometimes it's a walking through period where you've got to walk some things out. You've got to walk some things through to where you learn. I'll tell you, I learned the greatest... I learned the greatest I've ever learned in the year of 2008 about the love of God than I've never, ever learned. That jump-started me and kick-started me into getting an understanding of the love of the Lord. Now, have I had to work on my love walk since 2008? Absolutely, 150% if possible, I have. <laughs> There's been times I've got out of the love of God. And I've got man, I've got angry, and I've said things I shouldn't have said or done things I shouldn't have done. But I realized instead of living over in that and just thinking, oh, it's no big deal. See, we think that's no big deal. That's, that's the devil setting us up. Setting us up, trying to get something to grow down in here that's not good. Some kind of root of bitterness or hatred or envy or unforgiveness or something like that that's getting ready to spread poison throughout our body and kill us. Right? So, I learned the greatest deal about the love of the Lord. I finally got an understanding of what it is for His measure of love, for what it is of His presence, of His outpouring of His love, what it is to be baptized in the love of the Father. And I've been growing in that every year, it seems like. Every year I've been growing and growing. And God, listen, I don't know about you, but God just comes and He talks to me plain. And I'm so thankful for, the, for when God just says, Hello, Mike, hello. You know, it's almost like you just feel Him slap you. Whoosh. Get back in line and quit being goofy, you know? You know you're tolerating this too long. This isn't of me. This is of the devil. Quit tolerating it. Don't let fear run your life. Don't let him mouth off to you. Don't let it, you know, when you get in the Word and you find out what the Word says. You know, it's so wild. Like, the devil is such an idiot, but he is kind of smart in some ways. He's clever sometimes. Because he's been watching people for thousands and thousands of years, and he can see who you are and what's going on. He doesn't know you by God, but he knows what can push your buttons. Because he's a deceiver. He's an accuser of the brethren. And he is a liar, absolutely. So that means that everything he says is totally opposite of what God has said. Amen? So, he comes... And he tries to get us. He's come to these people, and he's tried to get them in fear to give up, to run to the hills, to just forget it. No, listen, that's not the key. Running and hiding is not the key. Putting on the full armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6, standing firm in what God has called you to do on this earth. That's the key. We are in the army of the Lord. We are a mighty moving force, guys. We are moving in to the things of God. We are taking ground in this earth with the love of the Father. And it's the love of the Lord that's going to bring the peace of God, the glory of God. It's the love of God that's going to get us out of here when it's time. Amen? It's His love. So, look here. Um, look at verse, uh, let's look at verse 12. It says, O our God, Will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of all these wild names, man. The son of this, the son of that. All that good stuff. And it says here, in the midst of the assembly, and he said, verse 15, and he said, listen all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, 
Do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Now, you, that's, that's great. That's one of those kind of deals we can swing from the chandeliers on. When we hear that verse, praise God, we can get excited. We can do cartwheels, praise God. We can do all kinds. Some of us can do cartwheels, but most of us in here probably can't. But it's, 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 <laughs> it's, 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 we get excited about that, but here's the deal. We say the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Now what's the next step when we hear that word declared, that scripture declared? In my mind, in my opinion, in my heart, it's we need to rest in the Lord. If the battle's not ours, and it's the Lord, then we need to rest. When you rest in God, you're in faith. When you rest in the word of the Lord, you're in faith. See, that's another tactic of the enemy. He tries to come to you and say, well, you're not, you're not, you don't have enough faith. Because can't you see, you know, things aren't changing in your family. Things aren't changing in your life. Things aren't changing at your job or blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, all that stuff you said 10 years ago hasn't even happened. And you know what I've learned how to respond to that? Because that happens a lot to me. It's not time yet, idiot. That's why. There's a season for everything. Now, some of y'all might be looking at me and saying, man, Mike, Pastor Mike, you're just too personal. That's just how I, that's how I do it. Devil, you're an idiot. You're a liar. It's not time yet. But when it's time, <laughs> we'll see what happens to your kingdom. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Because your time's coming. Well, you've been praying about Madeira, and you've been praying that the people of Madeira would come to Christ and that bars would close down and that people would get saved and, and, and the economy would come up so people can be who God's called them to be. And you've been praying all this for years, Mike, but that ain't happening. It is happening. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know naturally or even see naturally that, that is happening spiritually. So there are things, or things are changing. I'm encouraging you tonight. Things are changing in Madera, California. Things are happening. There's a people in the city, a, a, a people of God in this city that are rising up, man, and they are taking ground spiritually. And when you take ground spiritually, that spirit, that spirit realm will invade the natural realm. And we'll have the things of God. We'll have what we say, guys. We're having it. God's put us here in a blip in time to proclaim the name of Jesus, proclaim the will of the Lord in our town, proclaim the will of God in our county, our city, our state, our nation. He's put us here for a blip of time. And when he's using your mouth, he doesn't just use your mouth hoping something happens. He uses your mouth because you're declaring that it is going to happen. And that's where we're at right now. So I encourage you, don't give up. Keep speaking what God has shown you on a daily basis. Say it out of your mouth. Declare a thing and it will be established. Amen. So, <clears throat> the battle's not yours, but, it, but it's, it's God's. Verse 16, tomorrow go down. Now here's God's instruction by the prophet. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Now listen to verse 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Can you imagine that? Wait a minute. See, our natural mind is like, wait a minute here. These people are coming to us to fight. We better get ready to fight. We better get ready to do what we need to do to slaughter these guys and not let them take control. But the verse before, the prophet said, the battle's not yours, it's God's. They had a choice. They had a choice to think out of their natural mind, how am I going to figure this out? How are we going to do this? How is this going to happen? Or they had a choice to say the battle's not mine because God says it's his, so what do we do? We just obey the voice of the Lord and go do what he's called us to do. If he tells us to lay flat on our face for 15 seconds, then that's what we do. There's a reason for it. He tells them to go down. He's given them the instruction. You will not need to fight in this battle, 
And then it says here, here's an important word, position yourselves. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight, the Lord is with you right now. You continue to do what God has called you to do. I don't care how much demonic chatter is going on in the background. Demonic chatter cannot stop us. Hallelujah. It's the truth, guys. It don't matter what the devil's saying over your kids, your family, your grandchildren, your whatever, your husband, your wife, your life, whatever. It doesn't matter what he's saying. He's a lying devil trying to distract you and get you off focus of what God has called you to do. That's his job. That's all he does. We already know it. We've already, God's already called him on it by sending his son, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. He gave his life. He gave his life like a lamb, praise God, and he's coming back like a lion. And I'm here to tell you, position yourself. God has been dealing so strongly with me. Strongly. This morning during praise and worship, he began to deal with me so strongly about some things. Not bad things, but just some things in my life that he's really wanting to do in me because he's wanting me to be prepared for the days ahead. And I'm not going to get into what he's been talking to me about and all that kind of stuff, but he's been dealing, and he's given me, uh, excuse me, he's, he's, he showed me how he wants me to do certain things when it comes to spending time with him. And we've got, we've got to obey his voice when he tells us to. And that's where that position yourself comes from. Hallelujah. He says, position yourself, do what I've told you to do, go out, whatever it is, and do it. But see, keep that air or that, that pipeline open between you and him on a daily basis. Because now more than ever, we need to be closer to him than ever before. More than ever, we need to be closer to him. Dad preached him on that this morning about the relationship with him. We've got to know him, man. We've got to know the Father. I want to hear what he wants me to do and say, praise God. I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I want to be prepared and do what he's called me to do. Whew. He might even start talking to us about things that we enjoy doing. He might start pulling some of that stuff from us. Because he wants us to change position. And that might be hard on some of us at first. But he knows what he's doing. And if he's called you to something, he's going to grace you to do it, guys. He's going to. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a good word. He'll grace us to do it. I mean, I'm spitting all over my Bible. Whoosh. Sorry, Bible. That's holy. Holy spit on the holy Bible. Hey. <laughs> Verse 18. Hey, man, it does. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites, Kohathites and the children of the Kohathites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. <laughs> Woo! Ties in with that praise, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the victory is ours. Hallelujah. You know, let me say this before I go on. We got to get our eyes off all the crud that's going on in the world. It's nothing but a distraction if we allow it to be. What's going on in the world does not change the kingdom, guys. The kingdom has already been established. It's a done deal. God has already said how he's going to do things, and he's already told us how he wants us to do it. And the two things he said were the most important things on the face of the earth for a believer or for a Christian or for a person that's following after God is love the Lord God with all your heart 
and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Those two right there. When we make that our purpose, we are going to stay lined up with the Lord and we're going to be able to do great exploits concerning the things of God. Amen? I just, I, I, you know, it's so easy to bicker and to, and to get mad and to get angry and to, and to say things and all this kind of stuff. And I've been guilty as the day is long doing that in my own life concerning some of the things I say. You get frustrated and you just can't believe it. It's so weird and crazy and you can't believe people don't have that. You can't believe people don't have common sense. It's just some of this stuff's crazy and wild, but we got to see it for what it is. And it's the devil. And he's acting out. Because he's losing a grip. It's like my mom said, the devil's like a drowning man grasping for straws to breathe. That's what's happening. And this thing that's going on in Washington, D.C. right now, it's getting ready to blow up this nation, guys. There's some things that are being established this weekend and this week over there that is going to turn this country around, turn this nation around. We've got to get off blaming each other. Blame the devil! Because he's the one that's the hater. He's the one that stirs up all this junk. God tells us, has, or excuse me, has never told me in the Word, I've never read anywhere in the Word where we need to get our eyes on the media. Or what the newspapers say, or what the Internet says, or what, I've never read that Scripture. He tells us to get our eyes focused on what His plan is, what He wants to do. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is it? It's love. Some will grab, some will reject. But you plant, 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 you plant. You plant love, you plant peace, you plant, you plant strength, you plant encouragement, you plant the peace of God, the glory of God. You plant it everywhere you go, you plant it. You might not see the results. You might not see the dividends until the day you wake up in heaven and that person that you planted something to on the corner over there at that school or at that job site or wherever it is, you'll see that person. And five years down the road, they end up getting saved because you said one thing to them. Jesus loves you and he wants to keep you and bring you into heaven. Oh, I don't need to know that stuff. But five years down the road... There's been a lot of guys over the years that I've talked to and just said, and, I, and I'm not a guy that shoves nothing down people's throat. I just treat them with respect. I love them. I be nice to them. You know, and I just want them to know that I care about them. And I just feed as much as I can and bless as much as I can. And there's been a lot of people I've seen over the years have rejected and not really grabbed a hold of that. But, but lately I've been seeing a lot of people coming in. Amen. Amen, Brandon. Amen. I'm glad I can bless you then, brother. Just loves you, man. Amen. Wasn't well, all me, but praise God. Part of it. Amen. And that's okay because someone had a part in my life as well. Amen. So see, position yourself. Now let's we can't end right here. We gotta we gotta finish reading this part. It just gets too good. It says they raised their voices loud and high. Verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekeo, Teko, uh, Tekeo, Tekoa, or however you say it. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they uh, went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And they were defeated. <laughs> and you know what's crazy about this year? You know what's wild about this year? What's wild about this is they did what the Lord told them to do. They sung, for the Lord is good, and his mercies endure forever. For the Lord is good, and praise to God brought confusion on the enemy. 
And we could read on there, but it, it talks about they turned on themselves. Now, what would cause somebody to turn on themselves? Confusion. <laughs> Complete confusion. When we praise and when we worship the Lord, it brings confusion to the enemy. Now, I want to share something with you that happened to me this morning. And I'm sharing this because it's, it's, a, it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about right now concerning this, confusion and all this. During praise and worship this morning, we were having a grand time. I mean, just the presence of the Lord was here, just like tonight. Just, just the peace of God. People were just worshiping. You could sense it in the atmosphere, the glory and the love of the Lord, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, the milk and the honey and all that good stuff, praise the Lord. You could sense it in here. And all of a sudden, it was like a full assault attack on my mind, standing over there. Just out of nowhere, like someone would come up to you and just punch you from the side without you seeing it happen. That's what happened to me this morning. Fear just <laughs> around my throat. And I recognized what it was, obviously. It wasn't the presence of God. And immediately I said, no. No. No, devil. And I said, just because you did that, I'm going to lay on my back like I do every time I spend time with the Lord, and I'm going to get before God. And I said some few other things that I can't say in public, uh, you know, in church, to the devil. <clears throat> and I went ahead and did it. And I laid on my back. Some of you saw me laying on my back. And as soon as my back hit the ground, the spirit of fear left, and the peace of the Lord came in. And I remember laying there, and I told mom this at lunch. I remember laying there going, don't fall asleep, because if you fall asleep, you're going to snore out loud, and people are going to hear it. <laughs> there was so much peace on me. There was so much peace, and a lot of you that were here this morning sensed that peace. It was very easy. Even Ron said it. He would have laid down and went to sleep if he didn't have to stand and play the guitar because there was so much peace. But there's so much peace when you come before the Lord and position yourself. Now, see, why does that? That's just how I position myself. That's how I feel like the Lord. That's how I, 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 I get before the Lord. I just lay on my back before Him. Some of you might stand. Some of you might, it doesn't matter how it happens. Just position yourself before the Lord. But see, when you get into the river of peace, when you get in before the Lord in high praise, the devil will still try to attack. That's what the devil was trying to do right here. They came out and they got into the worship and the praise and the enemy still on their mind thought they were going to come slaughter the people of God. But all of a sudden, the tables turned. And the spirit, demonic spirit of confusion came on those people. And they turned on themselves. And all the people of God did was go, For the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. For the, and I guarantee, can you, I mean, I get goosebumps thinking about somebody just chanting at the people of God out loud. In the middle of a situation where it looks like they should have swords and sticks and rocks to defend themselves, but they didn't. They had the word of the Lord to defend themselves. They turned on themselves. And when the slaughtering was over of the enemy slaughtering itself, just like the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would not burn in that oven. They would not burn. And the devil got so ticked off through uh, King um, Nebuchadnezzar. Turn it up higher. Burn them higher. They're not burning. Turn it up higher. Out of his hate and anger, he got his own men killed. Because when the enemy is so freaked because of the things of God, he does stupid things and he sets himself up for more defeat. He made a mistake trying to kill me with leukemia. He made a mistake trying to kill you with sickness, disease, drugs, alcohol, all this other crazy stuff. He made a mistake because you gave your life to Christ, and now you know what people go through, and now you, with reckless abandon, go after the people that the devil's going after to bring them life like you got life. 
He cuts his own head off, guys. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with him cutting his own head off. Hallelujah. They turn to themselves. And then it goes on to read that the people of God went out and said, Oh, that's a nice ring. That's a nice piece of gold. That's a nice piece of silver. These idiots had all their jewels and money and everything on them just to bless us. But why did they receive the blessing? Because they obeyed the prophet. And they stood before the Lord. They positioned themselves to hear what God wanted to do. Because they came, they were in a corner, so to speak, naturally. They were pushed into a corner. And I was talking with Bonner before church tonight. It seems like sometimes when we get pushed into a corner, and we have to fight, we see where we're at spiritually when that happens. When I knew in 2008 that I was facing something that I had no control over physically, it had to be the Word of God to deliver me. There's something about that. You, you gird yourself up and you stand because sometimes it's time to rest. Sometimes it's time to fight. Amen? But the Word of the Lord, fight the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith. You do opposite of what the devil's saying. You do opposite of what the world is saying. You do opposite. One of the things the world is saying right now is hate. You do opposite of hate. You love. You'll stand to the shadow of the Almighty when you love keeps the door closed on the enemy. When you choose to love, when you choose, the Bible says, to be an imitator of Christ. When you choose to imitate what he did on this earth, he guards you, he protects you, he keeps you. It truly is. We can't be 50-50. It's not white and black. There's no, there's, 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 there's no gray in this. You got to be one side or the other now. I mean, that's basically where we're at. It's always been like that, but I mean, we're starting to see now. <laughs> this is true. Hallelujah. So we can't, we can't allow the devil to make things bigger in our minds than they are. Amen. Amen. By walking in love and praising and worshiping the Lord, your mind will be renewed, guys. It's a continual growing in the Spirit as you do that. We grow, we grow. A fervent prayer life you will grow in the peace and the love and the joy of the Lord as you pray and spend that intimate time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, <clears throat> has anybody in here been having problems with their neck? Like, you've been, like, lately been having problems with your neck, been having pain or something like that. Uh, it's just been not going away. It's just been there. You have? Okay, anybody else you have? Okay, if you have, just come on up here right now. Let me pray with you. And then here's another word of knowledge as well. Um, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis. I heard that multiple sclerosis. Does anybody, I don't think anybody in here is dealing with that personally right now. I don't know, but, well, Mary Jo, oh, she's at the hospital right now? Oh, she's home. Okay, well, we'll pray for Mary. Okay, so your neck, neck, neck. Okay, okay well, then I'll pray for Mary Jo. But does that, does that affect anybody else, that word? Okay, well, we'll pray for him too. Okay, oh, okay. Okay, okay, and then, um, okay, I'll get to that one in just a second. Okay, just lift your hands, Brock. Let's just get in agreement right now. Father, in Jesus' name, is your neck hurting right now? Okay, in the back. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you right now for Brock's neck. Jesus' name, I thank you for it right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, right now, for healing to flow right now. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to be totally honest with me. How does it feel? Hmm. Well, that's good. Is, is it looser? Yeah. It's 
habits. So Christ, give me more of your Father in Jesus' name. I thank you for a total manifestation of your healing. I command all pain to go. I command looseness and peace in his neck and body in Jesus' name. Amen. Now check it out again. Yeah. Go way down there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Praise God. All right. Father, I want to put my foot back on it. Sometimes um, sharing with people a word of knowledge or a gift from God or something like that brings them hope. And it helps them gain faith. So just share what took place tonight. And if the Lord wants to use it to help them, then pray it down and just let that be it. And that's awesome. Thank you so much. So thank you for sending your word. Thank you for that 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 word.
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Mary Jo right now. Let that healing anointing and worship him take this place. Let it come upon Mary Jo. Right now, God. Right now, God. The lightnings of healing from heaven, right now. In Jesus' name. Let the healing anointing flow on her right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Raise her up. And she can fulfill what you told her to fulfill, God, on this earth in the name of Jesus. And let's loose her body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You said to Jesus, Lord, that we are above all names. And that name of multiple sclerosis is under our feet. And it's under the blood. So we speak healing right now. We command alignment in Mary Jo's body now. Start now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God. Amen. Sclerosis. His name is Larry. Let's pray for him. Father, Royce has been ministered to him already. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we hook up with that ministry that Royce has already been doing with Larry. And we say in Jesus' name that those seeds that have been planted will come forth, that healing will come forth, that peace and strength will come forth in Larry's body in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you right now that that anointing that rose Jesus from the dead quickens Larry's body right now. In Jesus' name. And I thank you that the peace of the Lord rules and reigns in Larry's heart and body right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to be healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. You can't go down, Royce, because you're only 10. <laughs> you're the <laughs> captain. I felt that anointing go through you. I'm like, Lord, i got to hold on to it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How can the catcher catch the catcher? <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we declare healing in Larry's body. Amen. Amen.
Lord, we thank you for this young boy that's got multiple sclerosis right now via internet to fast and prayer. We release the healing power of Jesus upon that boy. God, I ask you right now for healing angels just to minister to him, to touch him. I ask you for ministering angels just to go forth in this boy's life right now in the name of Jesus. Fill the home with your glory, God. Fill the home with the peace of God. Fill the home with the healing anointing right now. Let it soothe. Let it soak into that place right now, into his body in the name of Jesus. I command his spine to straighten in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now, Father, I thank you for it. Now you as the mom or the dad or whoever's watching, you begin to praise and worship the Lord for it and thank the Lord every day that the word of the Lord is done and watch the manifestation take place. But stick with it till the manifestation happens. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for this man named Kevin, this request that came to me about this man named Kevin that has cancer. We curse cancer. We command it to get out of Kevin's body in the name of Jesus. We lift Kevin before you right now, Father, and we thank you for the healing power of God. Cancer, get out of his body now in Jesus' name. And we release healing that we sense in this place. We release it by faith to Kevin right now. And we say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Peace in your body in Jesus' name. And we thank you for change right now in Kevin's body. We speak life, Kevin, to your body right now in the name of Jesus. And we expect change to take place now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that no blood disease can live in this church, in these people's lives, in the name of Jesus, we say we have the DNA of God, the genome of God, the, be, uh, the begotten, his, his begotten Son, hallelujah. And we say we got the DNA of God living on the inside of us, the blood of God, hallelujah. And we thank you that our blood is clean, our blood is whole, our blood is restored in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, and I just want to say this right now, Lord, to the ones that are watching this right now on, on the internet, to us sitting in this place right now, to the ones that are going to watch the replay, I speak healing revival into your life right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the healing revival of God in our lives, our spirit, soul, and bodies in the name of Jesus, receive the healing of God right now in your life, wherever it needs to be, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for another level of glory that we can go to, Father. We thank you that we're going to another level of glory, hallelujah. Another level of glory, hallelujah. And I speak the peace of the Lord over every heart that's watching this in, right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for filling our hearts with your love and your glory and your power, Lord. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Now let me say this. Here's one more word of knowledge that I got earlier. And um, it's the number 22. But I believe that it, it has to do with something with money. Twenty. Does that mean anything to you, Brandon? Anything 22 money? No? Just be honest if it doesn't. N no? 22, the number 22, huh? Oh, really? What does that say? Do you know? Oh, that has to do with me. And so that's what y'all are talking about, or what? Ah. Man, I just wish I could get more on that. I don't... Lord, what is that? The key of David, yeah. Right. You know, the, key, the key of David is mentioned in Isaiah. It's also mentioned 
in Revelation, it says that Jesus has the key of David. And key is symbolic of authority, the, the authority to open up or to shut. <clears throat> and where it's originally mentioned in Isaiah, there was a man who was the treasurer in the nation who was misusing the, the money and building his own little thing. And God prophetically speaks to him says, I'm removing you and I'm going to put someone in your spot and give them the key of David, give them the ability to open, no man will close, and, and the ability to close and no man will open. So it has to do with authority. And God can give you that key in government. He can give you that key, you know, in any different level or, or area of society. And so if he's talking about a financial key, what he's saying is, I'm giving you the authority to open up the financial realm. And I know about a month ago on Wednesday night, I saw that angel that uh, is stationed here, actually, uh, that's stationed here. He's an angel of blessing and prosperity. I saw him in my spirit standing here, and I said, Lord, why am I seeing him? He said, because you, you and the church have never really done what I told you about him. And that is to uh, receive him and who he is and begin to decree that angels are coming through his position of authority in the church to go forth and to open up things and to prosper and to bless people uh, because, there again, he's, he's trying to position us for the future because we're going to need the finances in order to do what God's called us to do. So maybe it has to do with that. I just haven't got any more on that until you said that. So let's stand up right now. I, this is what I feel like the Lord wants to do when Dad was talking right there. Look, <clears throat> finances are powerful. Okay, and we need, we need finances to live on this earth. It's obvious. We've got to pay our bills. We've got to do things we can, so we can enjoy things. Different things like that. I understand that. But God has a certain place that he wants us to use us with our finances. Okay? And listen. The best thing we can do with our finances, and Mom talked about this a little bit this morning, so did Dad, is when we get things given to us financially, unexpected money, things like that, He wants us to ask Him, what does He want us to do, what does he want us to do with that? Sometimes He'll say, go ahead and buy that thing you've been wanting for a while. Sometimes He'll say, well, why don't you give it to that person over there because they just asked me for that exact amount of money this morning. There's been times where that's happened, man. It's like, you get it, and God says, give it away. And I've told that story about that one time, man, where I tried to even hide it in my wallet and stick it in my pocket so God wouldn't see it. Like an idiot, and he did see it. And he's like, quit trying to hide it. Do what I told you to do with it. You know what I mean? Okay, God. But I woke up real quick and said, all right, God, I give cheerfully. Because I know what the truth. He wants to get us finances to do what we need to do on this earth. He might want to give you 80 bucks to send to the Philippines to somebody that needs 80 bucks right now. That's the kind of God we serve. He knows all. He sees all. He understands it. But he wants to give us finances to be a blessing. Not only to uh, our families, to the people of God, to strangers or whatever. That's what he wants. And I got that word tonight, I got the number 22, and I heard money, and I, that's all I heard, so I just didn't know what was going on. So what Sabrina and Bridget and Tammy said about that and what they said, that's right on target, praise God. He gave that to us for a purpose, and then what Dad said brought more light on it to, to, to get an understanding for that. Did you? Could be connected with what we were sharing this morning about the carpeting of the church. It's not just to put carpet in the church. It's... God is going to find out whether he can get it through you before he's going to be able to really release it to you in the amounts he wants to. He wants to take everybody here to a higher level financially. And forget your thinking about your job or your fixed income or what, you know, all of that stuff. Throw that out the door. I'm not saying don't be responsible, you know, and all of that. But at the same time, he's got ways to bring this to you and open doors for you that you don't know. Were you wanting to say something?
Praise God. Amen. Well, I just know that he's wanting to take us all up to that higher level, and all we've got to do is obey him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we receive this number. We know, God, that you've given us the key of David. You're wanting to elevate everybody in here in their finances. You're wanting to open doors of income. You're wanting to give them favor with God and man. And so, Lord, we receive that position. We step up now by faith into that position. I know you spoke to me a couple of months ago, and you said, while I was under the anointing, you said to me that the church is $100,000 ahead. You said that, and I've been saying that ever since. I've been praising you for it, and I agree with this congregation that they are where you say they are financially, not where the devil tells them they are or what it looks like in the natural realm. I say the reins of heaven are falling on them. I say multiplication is on them. I say the angels of prosperity and blessing and flourishing that are here assigned to this church, assigned to this city, are going forth right now. And they are opening doors that no man can shut. They're bringing to the people of God that which you have for them in this realm. And God, I thank you that as they listen to your voice and they use it for your purpose, that not only will they be blessed, he's not going to make you give it all away, folks. Not only will they be blessed, but they will be a blessing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Lord, I thank you for that man right now that has $22 in his bank account, Lord. I thank you for increase. I speak the blessing to the Lord as you provide and use him and speak to him on what to do and where to go and what to say and how to do it. I thank you for provision in his life right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for giving him favor, for opening doors that no man can close and closing doors that no man can open in his life in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the provision that you have for us. We thank you for every person in this place tonight, God. I thank you for the life of God that lives on the inside of them. I thank you for the folks that are watching on the internet. I speak the life of God in them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for giving us divine appointments this week, God. Use us for your glory, God. Let us speak the living word and the love of Jesus Christ to every person that you lead us to this week, Father. We give you our lives. We say use us for your glory, Father God. And Lord, I thank you that every word that's been spoken spoken in this place tonight, Lord. Let it be sealed in our hearts. Let it be established, and let it bring the kingdom in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for answering the prayers that we've brought before you tonight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Sister Norma, come on up here real quick before we dismiss. And uh, uh, she just wants to pray with mom and dad. We want to pray for mom and dad. They're leaving on, on, on Wednesday for a couple weeks to minister in the Midwest. So let's just pray. Amen. Oh, praise God. Okay, everyone is standing great. We're going to honor our pastors tonight. They're going to be leaving on their Missouri trip this week. They'll be gone two weeks. And I just want to say something to you. Uh, I was writing this down it's over there tonight, so it's from the Lord. You have been given legal access to that region. Missouri, that region, you've been given legal access to that region. And as you pray, decree, prophesy, those ungodly structures are going to fall in that region. Okay. And also, all authority has been delegated to you. All authority. You take it, you use it. Of course, I know you're led by the Holy Spirit, but that's what the Lord was speaking. I mean, you go into that region all authority has been delegated to you, and you have legal access. And as you decree and prophesy and all of that, so just extend your hands toward them. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for our pastors, Lord, and we just honor them, Lord. And as they go on this journey to the Midwest, we know that you go with them, Lord. We ask for traveling mercies over them, Lord. We know that you go before them, Lord, and behind them and encamp all the way around them, dear God. We thank you, God, that you give your angels charge over them, Father God. And, Father, I'm just going to say that this trip is the best trip you've ever taken back there. And as you travel, you will be rested. You will have good food to eat along the way. It will be just a refreshing time for 
you. And it will be so pleasant as you travel during the day. And as you lie down at nighttime, God will give you sweet sleep. And Lord, I just thank you as they go and as they minister into the churches there. I tell you, Father, I believe your glory is going to shine forth brightly, dear God. Your presence will fill those churches, God. Lives will be changed, Father God. And as they prophesy, decree, dear God, and even pray, Father, change is coming to that region, Lord. I thank you now that the ministering angels are going before them. They're preparing the way, Father, and I thank you for that, dear God. And Father, as they go to the uh, autumn prayer with Billy Bram and all those wonderful prayerers, oh, they're going to just hear from you. They're going to be just so refreshed. Father, they're just going to be filled up, Lord, and we just thank you for that, God. We cover them with the blood of Jesus, and we say no weapon formed against them will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, God, and we send them off with blessings and with love and with uh, uh, protection, Father God. And we thank you for what you're doing on this trip, because Father God, I believe that God, it is going to be something, 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 Lord. And thank you for that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Well, hey, listen, this week, uh, uh, starting Friday night, Charlie, Prophet Charlie Champ is going to be with us, and uh, worship, uh, worshiper Sarah Miracle is going to be with us. She's from Canada. She's from Toronto, Canada. Actually, she's coming a long ways, and uh, it's going to be a glorious time. God set these meetings up here at the beginning of the year, and um, I'm telling you, there's going to be some prophetic stuff being said over our community in this area, and, and Brother Charlie is a true prophet. Lots of miracles, and actually, a lot of creative miracles happens during his meetings, man. A lot of things happen, and uh, he's just a humble man of the Lord. He's coming all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, so uh, try to make it out. Bring some people with with you. Uh, Friday night at 7, Saturday night at 6, and then of course both Sunday services, uh, they'll be here ministering this week. So be praying not only for mom and dad, but praying for these meetings coming up. I really believe God's going to bring people from around this area that's locked up with us as the body of Christ to take over this region. Hallelujah. Amen. One more thing, CJ. Right. She just got up out of the wheelchair. Amen. Where's this at? Is it here or somewhere else? Wow. Tell, if he's still on there, message him or something. Tell him to send us a testimony, like type it out or something. Send it to us on Facebook Messenger, on the Believer's Church page or something like that if we, so we can hear about that. That's kind of awesome. Praise the Lord for that, man. Healing power in the Philippines. Glory. To, didn't I say the Philippines earlier? Something about the Philippines, about money, or maybe God wants you to get, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, isn't that cool? That's kind of cool. Praise God. People are getting out of wheelchairs in the Philippines. Love you guys. Have a great week, man. Be the light. Be the light. Amen. Love you guys. Amen.